Hi, it's Gene, retired in Mexico. And we ask one question here, if you're new to the channel, which is, do they write them and sing them like they used to? A lot of people, young and old, they, they think the old music is better, but I'm, I'm not so sure. And today, we're going to do something I haven't done in 16 months, but it means, it means a lot to me. It's uh, ranking the albums and the songs of uh, legacy artists. So what am I talking about here? I'm talking about a veteran, somebody who's been around since before 2000, but is still innovate, innovative. So we did David Bowie, right? Things like Black Star. We, uh, you know, which was completely different than anything he'd ever done. And Bjork, Robert Plant, Sonic Youth, um, and one other, I just, uh, anyway, doesn't matter. Anyway, today we're going to do Paul McCartney. Now, I got to tell you, I've been sleeping on this guy. Uh, most of the music I'm going to talk about here, I haven't listened to until the last couple months. I listened to Memory Almost Full, and then, you know, uh, in the past year, McCartney 3, but I slept on most of his music in the 21st century. What a mistake. Paul McCartney, if anyone can rest on their laurels, if anyone has just earned the right to just take it easy and coast and just phone it in, he's the one, and he's, he doesn't do that. So where's that come from? A uh, long time ago, one time I saw Ray Charles in concert, and I'd seen a bunch of oldies bands. I'd seen Little Richard and Jerry Lee Lewis, and, you know, it was just, I just wanted to see these people. And I don't know what happened. He didn't phone it in. He gave us a show like he was hungry, like he had everything to prove, like it was an audition. And I don't know where that comes from. And I, I got kind of emotional, to be honest with you. I'm like, How's a guy like that who's done it all and won every award and had the president put stuff around his neck come to my town and want to give us the best show he ever gave? So, yeah, Paul McCartney's like that. He's just uh, restless. So let's get into it because, uh, you know, and, and don't worry, I'm not going to do his whole discography. He's got 44 albums. We're not going to do that. We're going to do 18. And let me explain a little bit. We're going to actually start in late 99, like in October, November of 99. He released a couple albums. And it makes sense because not only were they kind of listened to in the 21st century, but it uh, it makes a mark uh, where, where uh, his wife, Linda McCartney, died. And he didn't really do much for about a year because he was in mourning and then he got back into it so we're going to do the 18 albums starting from september october something like that of 99 so let's get into it let me bring up my spreadsheet and my notes and um yeah i've been really impressed with this catalog so we're going to do everything including classical and electronica and everything with firemen and all his experimental things. He's been a busy guy. 18 albums in 23 years is quite prolific. So coming in at number 18 is one of his classical pieces. And, you know, everything here is uh, at least decent on up. So this is, and I don't know how to say this because I, I don't know Latin. It's uh, E C C E. Ec Ecce Cor Meum, I don't know how you say it, uh, E-C-C-E-C-O-R-M-E-U-M. This is his choral uh, piece, and it's it's okay, it's listenable. Uh, but yeah, I think compared to, you know, the choral masters like Verdi and Mozart and Bach and you know, all the, all the famous people who have done uh, masses and choral works it's just not it's just not quite there so uh this one got three and a half stars on all music i'm gonna give it two and a half stars and i'll give all of these albums a rating so two and a half stars right down the middle two and a half out of five that means it's okay uh but it's not an album i'm really gonna return return to I've listened to it two times, and that was enough for me to make an assessment. 
it didn't uh, grow on me on on the on a repeated listening so that's it number 17 well <clears throat> yeah i don't want to pick on his classical period because he did some good stuff and we'll get into that but number 17 is ocean's kingdom and this one i'm uh <sighs> It's a little confusing because it's it's a ballet, but it doesn't sound like a ballet to me. It sounds like sounds more like film music. It's kind of symphonic, and you know, I guess if I saw the ballet that went with it, maybe it'd be different. But this one's from 2011. Uh, all music gives it three stars. Um, there's also there's some brass in this. And to my ears, he's he's trying to do, they sound to me like what I'm going to call Gershwinisms. Just made that word up. But it sounds like um, he's trying to evoke uh, George Gershwin. But it's just not as good. Sorry. So this one I'm going to give two and a half stars to. Yeah. All right, coming in at number 16. Yeah, I hate to put this one this low because it's it's so inventive, but uh it's McCartney 3 Imagined. So this is the one with remixes, covers, uh sometimes half and half where they might uh, duet with him a little bit or use his vocals and yeah, it's kind of a you know, a real mishmash it's not a mishmash it's not a classic remix album so on some tracks like saint vincent does uh women and wives and she sticks pretty close to the original lets mccartney sing it all the way through and it's just a classic remix and then you get probably my favorite piece on here is josh holmes uh, version of lavatory, lav, lavatory, lavatory, as they would say in England, lavatory lil. I love that track, but it, it's not Paul. It's Josh Home, and it sounds like Queens of the Stone Age, but it's awesome and it rocks. And so I like that. But it, yeah, it's a bit of a confusing uh, album. You know, Beck and other people they they sing on it, uh, and other times Paul sings on it, and it's just. The main thing about this is it doesn't improve on the originals, not one single song. Um, I tried to find one track on here that I thought, okay, this is better or more interesting than the original. Man, maybe the Josh home, maybe, maybe Lavatory Lil, but there just isn't anything on here that's better than McCartney 3. So uh, all music gives it three stars. Pitchfork 6.6, .6, which is about in the middle. I give it three stars. So we're all in agreement on McCartney 3 Imagined. Coming to number 15 is an album that a lot of people don't like. Um, I think I, I like it better than most. It's Driving Rain. And this comes comes at the bottom of a lot of people's lists, but I, I don't think it's I don't think it's that bad. It's uh, let's see, what are the reviews on this? It was two thousand one. It was his first real true pop album of original material since Linda's death, and you know it was. Um, you know, I'm looking at some of these ratings. Uh, Tastes like music. He gave it the sixteenth ranking overall, so he liked it a little bit better. Metacritic seventy five. All music was the most generous with four stars but here's the thing about this album it's kind of like some of us when we get older we get soft in the middle this album starts out great has three really strong tracks and then it has a couple really good closers um but in the middle so let me let me uh open up spotify here just real quick. Um, so here it is. We've got this opening track, Lonely Road. Really good track. From a Lover to a Friend. Pretty good. And then I, I like uh, the third track, She's Given Up Talking. And the fourth track, Driving Rain. 
those are good. And then when you get to the end, you get to tracks 15 and 16, you have the 10 minute rinse the raindrops, which is really interesting. And then his tacked on uh, freedom song, which he had done after 911. He had actually stopped the presses on this album. But in between are these songs like I Do, Tiny Bubble, Magic, Your Way, Spinning on an Axis, the instrumental Heather. It's just soft in the middle. So my rating on this is three stars. Three stars. That's what I'm giving it. Uh, starts great, ends great, really soft in the middle. Number 14. Okay, we're back to another classical album, but I like this one better than the other two. This is uh, Working Classical. So this is from 1999. It was one of the uh, two albums that he released in 99, very late in the year. And I like this a lot. What's interesting about it is it's, uh, it's a combination of new recordings and old recordings. So the London Symphony Orchestra does the new tracks, and that's my preference. And then the Loma Mar Quartet does uh, these yeah, quartet covers of Beatles songs and early Paul McCartney solo material. And I, and I like that, but I, I, I prefer the original material like New Leaf and and these songs, are they're very good. So I'm giving this a 3.0. Uh, but if it was an EP of just the London Symphony Orchestra and the new material, I'd give it three and a half stars. Um, the Loma Mar Quartet songs are nice, but I think non-essential. But this new uh, original material is is really quite listenable and quite good. And I think it actually sounds classical. It actually sounds like classical music. So I like that. Number 13, we are including live uh, albums on here. I'm including everything. This is back in the U.S. And later he released an album the same year called Back in the World. And the song tracks are almost identical. There's only four songs, I think, different. So Back in the U.S., Back in the World, whichever you pick. I just took Back in the U.S. I watched the video of this, and it's really enjoyable. Really enjoyable. Great, great performances from the band. They're on fire. But um, I got this lower uh, for the live albums because it really leans heavily on the classics. And that's what a lot of the critics said. I I agree. Um, All Music gave it two and a half stars. I give it three. I think it's a little better than that. They're a little hard on live albums, but... Yeah, it's really an enjoyable video uh, to watch. And there's some, you know, uh, offstage footage and things. And yeah, yeah, great band. But yeah, I prefer some of the other live albums where he incorporates some more of his uh, solo material and does less Beatles material. So anyway, three stars. Not a lot you can say on this. Well recorded and a good video. Number 12 is an album that really divides people. This is Egypt Station. So, yeah, I don't know. It's I've really tried to like this album, and I think it's got the same problem as Driving Rain. I think it starts out really well with some strong songs. And then, you know, it it, it kind of gets soft in the, in the middle again. So... Yeah, these these songs here. I don't know. Come on to me is come on to me is really good. Uh, I like that one a lot. And uh, and songs like towards the end, you have despite repeated warnings, which is really an interesting song. But then, you know, in between, you've got these happy with you, who cares for you, which is a lot of people say is the worst song of the twenty first century. So. Yeah, yeah, it's got some good stuff. Uh, the production's fine. It's not my favorite. There's some albums that uh, you know I prefer the production on, but this is a fine album. Uh, let's see. All Music gives it three and a half stars, and I give it three. I give it three stars, but, you know, a high three. So that's it. Uh, number 11. 
is Kisses on the Bottom. It's a very interesting album. Uh, he he chose some really interesting uh, standards, you know, that you wouldn't normally think of. I mean, some I've heard before accentuate the positive and these different songs, but there's a lot of, there's some songs on here like Inchworm that I, I don't remember ever hearing that song in my life. And it's really pretty cool. And he puts a little children's choir on it, but it works. I said in uh, one of my other videos, don't do children's choirs, but some, sometimes it works. And yeah, I like uh, I like Kisses on the Bottom. It, it kind of brings out his older voice a lot more, though, for some reason. But one of the strangest things about this album is he put two originals on there, and they might be the best two songs. So he wrote these two pieces, and they fit seamlessly in the album. They sound like they could be old standards. So, you know, he did this at Capitol Studios in uh, Los Angeles, I think, with, you know, an orchestra. And everything's really loving and faithful. Faithful, that's the word I was looking for. So some people might think it's not that interesting, but it's kind of intimate. Uh, but, you know, he's he's no Tony Bennett. So he's trying to pull off that kind of a thing, and it's fairly successful. Uh, high three points on this one. Uh, All Music gave it three, Metacritic 62. So, yeah, I think I'm in line with the critics on this one. Uh, but those two originals, really good. Number 10. This is an album that grew on me. Man, the first time I played it, I just went like, WTF, what is this? But I stuck with it. I played it. And now I get it. I, I get it totally. From 2000, it's Liverpool Sound Collage. And this was made with, uh, it's collaboration with, from track to track, it varies. Youth, Super Furry Animals is on here. Uh, that might be my favorite track with with the collaboration with them. So what did he do? He took a lot of uh, tape and sound bites, and he put it with electronics. And it's music concrete. That's what it is. It's and I love it because I'm a big fan of that kind of thing. This is his revolution number nine, and it makes sense. And something I wanted to just digress here for a quick moment a lot of people don't know this but john lennon would have never met yoko ono if it hadn't have been for paul or there was a couple meetings but one of them my understanding is from a from the book that i read here uh, i've got a book on the beatles is john was pretty much hanging around with magic alex playing with his toy train set and paul was hobnobbing and in uh london with jane asher and he was seeing all this arts and culture and he was like john you you got to go down and see this and you got to get out of the house and go down here he's like all right so he he went down there and he saw the work of yoko ono so yoko had done um a lot of this kind of music before she even knew about the beatles or met anybody she worked with john cage in new york so she had a whole history of doing this kind of music. Paul was very familiar with Stockhausen, who was a big influence on Revolution Number no. 9. And so then John and Yoko end up doing Revolution Number no. 9. They were the main people on it. But a lot of people don't know that Paul was really the one. Paul and Yoko were the two that were into this kind of uh, avant-garde music first. Probably Yoko first and then Paul. So, yeah, it makes sense. And, yeah, this Liverpool sound collage that uses little clips of the Beatles really grows on you. It's um, I'm giving it three stars, but a really high three stars. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm changing that right now. 3.5. The more I talk about it, the more I realize how much I like it.
So that's my first selection in the top 10. Coming in at number nine, live album, Good Evening, New York City. Now, I also watched the video of this, and it's more entertaining than back in the U.S. And the reason is the song selection. They do a lot of, um, they do a couple firemen songs on here. Firemen, I should say, not fireman. And it's just, it's just really um, different. Um, I, let me pull this up just real quick. This is, um, see, I like that they do, do some more unexpected things. So yeah, it opens with drive my car and jet, but then they do only mama knows and flaming pie, um, highway by the firemen. Um, he does, uh, here today from tug of war, the song he wrote for John. He does um, Dance Tonight and Calico Skies and Sing the Changes by the Firemen. And then on ukulele does um, Something, the George Harrison song, which is really sweet. And then the band comes in at the end of that. Um, he does, uh, yeah, and then he closes, you know, then he, go then he goes to town in the last uh, 10 songs, a more typical set. But there's also, if you watch the video, they're doing a sound check, and they do Carl Perkins' Matchbox. And they tear it up. It's so awesome, the way they do this song. They're having a lot of fun. So I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, this is a better set list. Um, and I think a better video than back in the U.S. So that's why I've got it here at three and a half stars, all music three. Again, they're pretty tough on uh, live albums, but I give this three and a half. It's fun. Now, number eight is the uh, first album chronologically in the set. And this is Run, Devil, Run, the first thing that he recorded after Linda died. And man, this is, uh, you know, first, first time I played it, I thought, eh, all right. But you know what happened was I, I turned it up a little bit. <laughs> I turned the volume up a little bit. And it, uh, it's, it's great. He has such a creative um, song selection here, uh, Movie Mag and Lonesome Town and these songs that I, I you know, coquette. These were songs by major artists like Carl Perkins and Eddie Cochran, but he went with the less, you know, even Chuck Berry, he picked Brown Eyed Handsome Man. Again, he did a, a couple originals on here, so he used the same thinking for Kisses on the Bottom. But you've you've got a band on here. I mean, David Gilmore is on here. So you've got some really good musicians uh, playing on here, and they are just taking these oldies from the 50s and just ripping it up, letting loose, letting their hair down, and ripping it up. And uh, there's only a couple of really famous songs on here, like Elvis Presley's um, All Shook Up or maybe Big Joe Turner's Honey Hush, but everything else on here. And then it closes with Party, which I think... I think it's a Wanda Jackson song. I don't know. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but 15 songs goes through real fast, 40 minutes. Love it. Uh, this song, this album gets better and better on repeated listenings. It's just, it's just fun. I like to hear Paul McCartney having fun. Number seven from 2013, new. And that's the name of the album, new. So what you got on this album, it's pretty simple. You got modern production. This was the, this is really when Paul embraced the, the new producers. He got all these people like, I'm trying to remember, was it Paul Epworth and Mark Ronson and those guys? He got a bunch of the hot producers, people that worked with Adele and everybody like that. He got these modern producers, but he had a pretty good batch of songs. So that works when they're in combination. If if it's not good song composition, then the, the newer production really, it's kind of a bad one-two combo. But, but get the modern producers in there with a good song set, it's really good. I, I like um, 
a new new and i like the sound i mean i don't you know i'm picky about my uh production but so there's a a, a couple weak tracks on here but all in all it's a really strong album uh save us i like on my way to work queenie eye early days the title track new hosanna yeah these are good songs uh so I don't know what else to say about it, but it was really a, you know, after coming, it came after Kisses on the Bottom, which was this orchestra, you know, this very Tony Bennett style. And then, bam, he comes in the next year with this totally different production style. And it works. Uh, New is a good album. I give it four stars. So Run Devil Run, four stars. and. Uh, no, I said Run Devil Run three and a half. No, I'm sorry. I give this one three and a half. I'm looking at the all music scores. All music gave Run Devil Run and New four stars. I give them three and a half, but we're close. We're in the ballpark. But now we're going to get to my first four star album. So everything here, the top six, is four stars and higher. Another live album, and this one really surprised me. I kind of just dismissed it. It was one of the last things that I listened to. It's Amoeba gig. So what's Amoeba? That's a record store. There's uh, three of them in California. And I guess the third one opened up in Hollywood. And he did this surprise gig. Yeah, hence the name gig at Amoeba Records. It's an independent record store. And this one is really fun. Uh, and you have a smaller audience, so it's very um, intimate. And, uh, yeah, just let me, you know, he opens with some of the same songs he did on his uh, New York City. He opens with Drive My Car and then does Only Mama Knows. But he throws in some interesting song choices here. Sea Moon, which is an old wing song. I'll Follow the Sun. That's a pretty deep track from the Beatles. Uh, he does a song called That Was Me that I really like. When they do Back in the USSR, they tear the roof off the place. Oh, Lord. That is just uh, so hard rocking. A lot of humor on this. Um, nod your head when he gets everybody uh, uh, moving with the music and house of wax and he does matchbox that i talked about here earlier i've got a feeling some really nice things on here um and then when he does uh here today uh he gets really emotional on that song and you can tell he's having fun and he's really feeling it and this is my favorite live album um of, of his uh live album catalog in the 21st century Highly recommend Amoeba Gig. Really fun. That's from uh, was released in 2010, but it was recorded a little bit earlier. All right, coming at number five. Ah, okay. We haven't even talked about this yet. This isn't the Firemen, and this isn't um, anything like the Sound Collage. This is Twin Freaks. His uh, collaboration with Freelance, the Freelance Hellraiser, and this is great stuff. So. What happened was in 2004, he had asked the freelance Hellraiser to DJ before his gigs, before his uh, concerts. I, I shouldn't call him a gig if you've got, you know, 30,000, 40,000 people in the audience. But um, you've got um, you've got all these um, like songs like Temporary Secretary. It's so much fun. He takes such liberty, and like Wikipedia says, no one really knows how much is Paul and how much is uh, the freelance Hellraiser. I forget his name, Roy Kerr, I think is his name. And he's from England. He was, by the way, I was reading up on him. We are trying to read up on him. There's like no photos of this guy, so I'll show you a couple photos here. But... um He's always like in a hat or sunglasses. He's kind of anonymous, but he got together and these are these are so much fun. And it's electronica, kind of, DJ, kind of electronica, but he just 
takes these Paul McCartney songs apart and reworks them in a fashion that they're almost unrecognizable. But I absolutely uh, love Twin Freaks. I give this four stars. Coming in at number four is uh, The Fireman, Electric Arguments, his collaboration with the youth. And this just grows on me every time I listen to it. Uh, AMG gives it four and a half stars. I give it four, but a really high four. Paul plays so much on here. I've I there's slide guitar on here. Did you know Paul McCartney plays slide guitar? Yeah, there, his bass is very noticeable. Mandolin, harmonica, and the styles that I hear. There's um, some real vitriol kind of you know anger on uh the opening track which um some people say was aimed at heather mills uh if so fine i don't have a problem with that uh some people thought it was mean-spirited but one writer said if that's the way he feels i'm with her but anyway uh, but then he turns around and he does gospel. There's lo-fi on here. There's psychedelia. This is a varied album. Uh, it's a long album because in 2008, people were trying to give you as many minutes as possible. But I think it goes by. There's so much variety. It just moves by. Pitchfork gave it 7.3. Yeah, I really like this uh, album a lot. So that comes in at number four. All right, the top three are all Paul McCartney studio albums. No electronica, no collaborations, nothing like that. Number three, McCartney 3. This came out in 2020 during the pandemic. All instruments by Paul McCartney with, um, I, th I think some, I think track seven has some drums and some things has a couple other musicians on it so aside from track seven it's all paul great stuff i <laughs> i really like it and you know what's interesting about this album is is that um when i do my songs list there's not there's not going to be a lot on my songs list from here and yet it's my number three album it is just so consistent. I mean, you have Find My Way and Women and Wives, Lavatory Lil, we talked about, Deep, Deep Feelings, a really good song, Sliden, The Kiss of Venus, just really strong songs. I just don't know how many, if any, are going to make my top 10. I'm, I'm down to about 14, 15 songs on that list. I've got to pare it down to a top 10. Uh, maybe I'll do a top 12, who knows. But um, Really, really strong songs, and yet, you know, as often happens, an album that I rate lower than this one may have one or two standout tracks. This one is just solid all the way through. So if you haven't heard McCartney 3, I really, really recommend this album. And, uh, yeah, who knew that in 2020 that he would put out something this strong? I mean, the critics really liked this album. Pitchfork, which is very stingy, gave it a 7.2. And uh, Metacritic, 81. And All Music, four stars. I give it four, but a really strong four. like this album a lot. Coming in number two is Paul McCartney's divorce album that doesn't sound like a divorce album. It's Memory Almost Full. And this is the one album that I had listened to a few years back that got me maybe thinking, oh, he made at least one good album. Uh, I, I downloaded this when it came out in 2007 and then just kind of slept on the rest of his catalog for a while. But I've been listening to this album for the past, uh, what is this, uh, 16 years already? Wow. So, wow, time flies. Memory almost full. Uh <sighs> This album has just grown on me and grown on me over the years. I absolutely love this. These songs, um, you know, opens with Dance Tonight, but then goes into Ever Present Past. Um, track four is Only Mama Knows, and then You Tell Me. And uh, it gets 
maybe just a little soft in the middle, but still gratitude is a real nice song. And, and gratitude is such a contrast to the opening of the Fireman album because he's talking about his gratitude for Heather. And then on the next album, he's like tearing a hole in her. So <laughs> Vintage Coles, that was me. Really good song. And um, yeah, yeah. And so there's 16 songs in here. So maybe it's, a, I don't know, 50 minutes. So it's not too long, but it might be a song or two long. But other than that, I think it's a close to perfect album. Um, I I only give it four stars, but that's still a really strong, strong, strong four stars. And that's what pretty much everybody else gives it. All music gives it four. But yeah, this is the divorce album that doesn't feel like a divorce album. But it's so, I like the production. I think David Kahn, Kane Kahn did it, I think. And in my estimation, he did a good job. It's got a clean sound. It's energetic. It's creative. His best batch of uh, new songs in a long time. So you probably figured out my number one, and you might have figured it out before I started, but this is the Nigel Godrich-produced Chaos and Creation in the Backyard. Oof. Such a beautiful job on the production and you know famously nigel was blunt with paul and he's if he didn't like something he told him hey paul that sucks you know get another song and paul was like hey i'm sir paul here <laughs> you now but they worked it out and uh it was the better for it so i think that he uh kind of curated the songs a little bit and that's why it might be such a great album. He just didn't uh, stand for any average songs. So what you get is Paul's top-notch songwriting on here. Uh, AMG gave it four, but I'm giving this one four and a half stars. This is an almost perfect album. And this is the one that when I listened to it, I said, I've got to do a deep dive into his whole catalog and do something on this channel because this is really, really... Uh, awesome stuff you've got um fine line opens this that's that's a that's a great song if you haven't heard it and track three is jenny wren with the um what's it called a, a do deck the um armenian flute made out of apricot wood so pretty on here you've got english tea and too much rain and writing to vanity fair lots of really really good songs on here this never happened before. This is a, this is the strongest set. Nig Nigel Godrich, if you don't know who he is, he has produced uh, XTC and Radiohead, and he's just one of the finest producers. And so, Chaos and Creation in the Backyard. I don't think this, this is going to surprise anybody from 2005, but what an excellent set of songs, cleanly produced. Paul's playing really well, and that's it. And I'll work on the top songs, and we'll do another video on that. But thanks for joining me on the channel. Let me know what your favorite Paul McCartney albums are or what your reaction is to this. And and uh, hit that like or subscribe button. It, 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 it really helps. Um, it's surprising how many people don't. Um, and it... all I can say is show some love to your YouTuber. If you like what we're doing, do hit that like or subscribe. And as we say here in Bonita, Mexico, buen dia and feliz Navidad. Take care.